Suinda, Cheryl Bear Slee, Natle Wasten, Dimdemi Slee. My name is Cheryl Bear, and I'm from the beautiful village of Natle Wasten First Nation, which is uh, located about <clears throat> an hour and a half west of Prince George, BC. I'm sitting right now on the Coast Salish territories, um, the um, Musqueam, Tsleil Tooth, and Squamish First Nations. So I'd like to acknowledge them and thank them for uh, letting me live and play and work on their beautiful lands. Uh, this is the land now known as Vancouver. The, the first time I ever seen anyone do anything sort of like an outward display of, of recognizing and remembering and honoring uh, murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls, uh, it was in uh, on the Saboba Reservation. It was a women's conference and they, uh, <clears throat> they got, had me in there. And I, um, there was a couple hundred women. And it was a beautiful event, and uh, and and there on on a table they had a a table in the near the front. It was kind of like a little bit off on the side, but it was very in plain, very obviously in plain view. <clears throat> and there were two chairs that they had put up on on that table, and they were covered with um, Pendleton blankets, and. Um, and I've since seen that done at powwows where they're they're going to remember someone who passed away and you know uh, recently, and uh, but I I hadn't seen this in like a women's conference and so someone explained that they said as soon as they said this represents uh, our um, the loved ones that we have the murdered and missing as soon as they said that my heart just it, like I just I just felt it. In my body, and I and I just started crying because of remembering uh, the ones that 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 I know that I've lost, and uh, and how uh, my first um, experience was when I was um, 15. And my so my dad put a paper in front of me and said, <clears throat> "said Do you know this girl?" And I just finished grade eight, and uh, and I looked at the paper, and there was my friend um, who <clears throat> oh, we have an auntie in common. And I looked at her and I, at the, her face on the paper, and I was so shocked. And as a fifteen-year-old girl, that um, and and she was um, she was strangled with the cord of her own hoodie, and uh, and that was that was so brutal. I remember just feeling like stepping out of myself, you know, and just that that terror. And so from that day on, every time I, I bought a hoodie I would cut off the, the hoodie and I'd pull it out and I did that with my son's hoodies when they were born and finally one time I think one of them was 13 and I went to go and do that and my son said no mom this is you know I want this and that's when I realized oh my gosh that's and I just now I have two hoodies in my in my closet and, and they have still the strings on them and that's and now I'm 52 years old and that's that's how long it's taken for me to sort of, and, but I still have that story within me, you know. And, and and so when I saw those chairs, that's what I saw. I saw Nina, Nina Joseph. And then when I was eighteen, I lost my cousin Kim. She was stolen from us and and uh, and murdered. And <clears throat> and those those things never leave you. And I was working as a pastor on the downtown east side at the time and so there was there was a girl who got baptized in our church and she ended up being found on the on the Picton farm so those um and when it comes to the red dress the this is this art is so beautiful and subversive and it you know when you have an image of something it'll change you in a way that uh that just a, a lecture can't like a story or a poem or music or artwork it, it just it just helps us and the first time i saw the red dress the red dresses. I think I was at a Nate's conference in near near Portland, Oregon, <clears throat> and uh, I think it's George Fox Seminary. And um, they had them up all in the in the in the area. You would go between the buildings, <clears throat> and I and I and some of them were like you know blowing in the in a breeze, and and it just um, it was so powerful to me. And I felt like I just wanted to thank so much the person who who created this, who who thought of this. To commemorate, to remember, but also just this stark reminder of these are missing people. These are real people. These are our loved ones, our beloveds that are gone and taken from us. So I'm so grateful for this, for the Red Dress campaign.